Hi and welcome to 2018 Paper 1 of the Leibniz Ordinary Level. Now, this is question 5 we're on. As usual, I suggest you pause the video at the appropriate times and just give the question a go. Uh, if you want to set notes I'm working off with the answers built in, uh, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com and that email address should be in the description below. This question here is about 5C, so you worth 5 marks, and we're, asked to, we're told the diagram on the right shows the graph of a quadratic function f. So using function notation, okay. Always remember that with function notation that f of x is the equivalent way uh, or a different notation system, you're saying y. Okay, so as you can see here, they, they're using y and x-axis. Okay, now often they write that as the f of x-axis. Um, whether that's an oversight, which I very much doubt. Um, now, it says write down the coordinates of a, b, and c. So you have your x, f of x term, or uh, point, or more appropriate, you'd call it x and y. That's how we'd normally refer to that. But again, f of x and y are equivalent. So let's see, let's look for a. Okay, well, a is on the y-axis, so we know that x is 0. Okay, how far up does it go? It goes up as far as 6, so 0, 6. Now, the b point is next. Now, that's on the x-axis, so the y value is 0 and it's minus 2 on the x. Okay. Now, c value is again is on the x-axis, and the coordinate there is, is going to be 0 on the, the y-axis, sorry. Uh, yeah, 0 on the y-axis, and 3 on the x-axis. Okay. Now, those two points being given there are the, I suppose, the roots of this equation, it's going to be a quadratic, so it has that shape, and that'll be the max point. You're not given that, that point A is not the max, it's just where it crosses the y axis. Okay, so that's part A. That's the answer is just built in there. Now, part B here says show that the function can be written as f of x equals minus x squared plus x plus x. Okay, go to the answer for this one, but remember again that f of x is the same thing as y. Now, in my notation, I usually try to keep the x down here just to try to indicate that the it's not f times x, f of x is one thing. Okay, that thing in brackets just indicates the input uh, for this particular function. Okay, so there's a lot going on here, but I've written out again my function, I was given that in the question. Below that here, I've written the general form of a quadratic function. So from that, you can identify A, B, and C. Now, if we were using the quadratic formula, we'd need to know what A, B, and C are. Um, but in this case, I'm trying to actually derive this function from information um, on the, in, in general. Okay. So look at this. You see straight away that the C value of, this, of the quadratic on top is 6. So I found the C value straight off. Now, that's my low partial 3 marks, definitely got. Okay. I then put, I'm going to take any input from the graph. Okay, so if I think, if I go back here, I could use minus 2, I could use 1, I could use 0, 1, 2, or 3. Um, I'm just choosing to use negative 2 here. Uh, I put a true instead of uh, x in the function. Okay, now that doesn't get rid of the a and the b. Okay, and... What I'm, I'm trying to get across here then in the second part is that when x is minus 2, the function equals 0. So that's why I can make, I can put this here equal to 0, and I've done that down here. And that's the reasoning. Remember, any uh, x value, the y value is 0. Okay. Um, so they do the same thing for x equal to 3. So I put it into the function, it removes the x. I'm left an equation of a and b. I'm putting that equal to zero, just like the logic here um, from the previous bit. So now I have two equations. Okay, I have two unknowns. Now we came across this in question four and I think question three. That's simultaneous equations. I'm using the elimination method. Okay. Um, in, in question three, we, we went through the elimination and the substitution method. So for this method to work, the elimination, I need to make one of the variables equal in size but opposite in magnitude. Uh, the one that I went with is the B one. So if I multiply the top equation, the first equation, by uh, 3, and I end up with minus 6B. You see that down there? If I 
multiply the second equation by plus 2, I'll end up with plus 6b. You'll see that just down here. Now, because I'm multiplying by 3, I have to do it all the way across. So 3 times 4a is 12a. Uh, I already said 3 times minus 2b is minus 6b. And then 3 by 6 is 18. On the second equation, 2 times 9 is 18a. That's where you get that. 2 times the 3b is 6b. And lastly, 2 times 6 is 12. So now the equations are bigger, but nothing's really changed, okay, because I've, I've, I've done the same thing all the way across. But if you'll see, when I, if I combine the two equations together, the b's will cancel. Okay, so they're gone. You're left with uh, 30a and plus 30. I can solve for that, bring the 30a across. And there's multiple ways of doing this, but I just brought the 30a across, becomes negative going across the equal. Then divide across the negative 30, so it's the negative 30 has been multiplied by a, and that goes back across the equal, becomes divided. So you end up with 30 divided by negative 30, and that's the same thing as negative 1. Okay, so that's uh, a is equal to negative 1. Now, to speed things up, I've just done the put a in to either equation and solved out for the b value, and I got a b value of 1. Okay, so it's as if I put 1 in there, sorry, negative 1 in there instead of a. Um, that become negative 8, um, bring that across the equal, plus 8, negative the 6, 6 becomes minus 6 going across, and you'd end up with 2, um, and across divide by the minus 2, and I got the b is equal to 1. And I, I suggest working through that yourself, okay? You're just putting b into either of these two equations and solving out for the, the a value, okay? Sorry, you're putting a in and solving out for the b value. Now, that should be um, that, okay. So part B, now move on to part C here. It says, show using calculus, so it's another way of saying differentiating, that the maximum point of the function is 0.5 and 6.25. So you're given the answer, okay, you're asked to prove the answer is correct. So I'll go straight to the answer here. Now I've put in this little box here, the steps to finding max or min. And the first step, you differentiate whatever function you're given. Then you put that differentiated function equal to zero, because at the max or min, the slope of, of the function is equal to zero. So if you think about the quadratic like that, at the max, the slope there is zero. Slope's going down here, so it might be positive four, three, two, one, zero, negative one, negative two, negative twelve. Okay, positive going up, negative going down. But at some point, there is no slope. That's the max. So that means you can put the differentiated function equal to zero. You should be able to solve that, okay? And then you found the x value. Use that x value to find y. So we go through here. Step one, we have our function. So I differentiate it, okay? So differentiate this, you multiply the power by number in front. So it's two times negative one equals negative two. And then the second step of differentiating that term is you take one away from the power. So 2 take away 1 is well, 1. Now, if I differentiate a, a term on its own um, with no power, the term just drops away, you're left with the number in front, so it was plus 1 times x. The x drops away, you're left with 1. And the last thing, if you differentiate a number, it always turns to 0. So it's, it's gone. So my in differentiated function equals minus 2x plus 1. So step 3, I can because I know that at the maximum or minimum, the slope f of x is equal to 0. I can put 0 equal to this function here. So these two things become equal to each other. That's written there. Now I'm going to solve that. I bring the 2x across. It becomes positive going across the x. So 2 times some number equals 1. That number has to be a half. So I brought the 2 across. It was being multiplied on the left. becomes divided on the right. So that's equal to a half, which is equivalent to 0.5, which is what the question was looking for. Okay. Now, with step four, okay, I want to find what the y value is. So I put my x value back into the original function, this function here, and use the calculator to solve it out. So everywhere you see x, I put a half. So it's minus a half time, half squared plus a half plus six. Now, pure calculator job. Make sure you be very careful because a lot of people there might forget that, that this, is a, this minus is not being affected by the square. The square is what you should apply first by the rules of bomb dots. So a half squared means a half times a half, which is a quarter. So you know, with minus a quarter plus a half plus six, and minus a quarter plus a half is the same thing as plus a half, quarter. Um, plus the six units is six and a quarter units. 
which is the same thing as 6.25. And that's where I get the second coordinate. Job done. So if you know your method, okay, this is this is a lovely question. If you don't, you're going nowhere. But if you saw using calculus and you realize that f of x is what you should be working with, you'd have at least differentiate it. And you'd at least get the low partial. Okay, so it's part C. It should be the end of question five, I think. Okay, so thanks very much, and see you on question six.